Hello, good morning. This is Ana Dominguez, your language coach. And today we are going to continue reading together Cupid and CK. You have the first part already recorded. So continue with me this story. Just by the way, I just put this picture, which, which is a fantastic sculpture um, that you can enjoy just seeing the details and how the scenery or the scene that we are going to describe today, that we are going to read today, you will understand better this, this scene, this, this moment. Learn with me classical mythology and practice the language of telling stories in English. With these videos, you will review with me spelling, phonetics, expressions, formal style and grammar. Recommendation, take notes while you listen. Intentionally, I haven't used pictures to illustrate the story because I want you to use your own imagination to see the scenarios described, the characters described, and the objects described. Part two, the jealous sisters. CK rejoiced in the love of this husband who came to her only by night, but sad were the long days to which she had to live alone. CK soon wearies of her life of easy luxury, and I'm going to explain this word. Wearies is the same as saying she wasn't satisfied, she was already bored of this life of easy luxury and starts to pine. And pine in this means um, want something deeply. So pine in her solitude. Gilding, gilding is, um, uh, is an adjective. And in this, in this sentence, gilding at last to her please, this is Cupid. So gilding is submissive or wanted to give her whatever she was asking. So yielding at last to her please, to her please, right? Cupid runs is to say gave or gives her. Cupid grants her a visit from her two sisters. Though he, and, and see this word here, warns, he warns her that they will cause unhappiness and makes her promise to tell them nothing about himself. So I repeat this, though he warns her that they will cause unhappiness and makes her promise to tell them nothing about himself. A zephyr, zephyr remember is the wind, that wind that rescued her from the top of the mountain. So a zephyr brings her sisters, again zephyr is who brings people to this palace, to CK the next day. Glad was she to see, and I want you to see this structure. Glad was she to see. This is an inversion. As you can see, at the beginning, they have placed the adjective, then the verb, and then the subject. Instead of saying, she was glad to see, they have put, glad was she to see. And in this case, it's, it's an inversion and also Inversions are emphasizing whatever you are saying, and at the same time, this structure gives a little bit more formal style, you could say. And remember, this is a story. So glad was she to see them again, and no less amazed were they by the riches and adornments of her new home. But when eagerly they questioned her, as to the master of all this wealth, she put them off with short, short answers. I'm going to explain what does it mean exactly eagerly. Eagerly, in this case, is an adverb, no? But when eagerly, in this way, is an adverb mode. And eagerly, eager is also an adjective, remember? That means to be ready or with full desire of doing something, but willing to do something. Eagerly, in this case, with passion, with, mm, with all the intentions that they could, they could show, eagerly, right? 
they questioned her as to the master of her of all this wealth. She put them off with short answers. And to put someone off in this case, remember, is to um, literally is like to evade them. Yes, so she tried to evade them because she promised already to Cupid that she won't say anything about him. Her husband, she said, was a handsome young prince who stayed out all day hunting in the woods. And let and le, and least no, and lest she should be tempted by their curiosity to say more, and lest she should be tempted by their curiosity to say more. She had haste to dismiss the sisters with costly presents before the hour that should bring him to her arms. So at least in here is even if no, she should be tempted by the curiosity to say more. She made haste to dismiss and made haste, made haste literally means she was in a hurry to dismiss her, the sisters to tell them, well, goodbye here. And she gave her them some presents in order to, you know, dismiss them. We keep reading by, uh, but they filled with envy of her good fortune. But they, sorry, I have made the wrong intonation. I'm going to say it right. But they, filled with envy of her good fortune, came back next day, set on knowing who could be that great lord so much richer than their own husbands. And here I have, a, um, I have highlighted, um, next day said on knowing who, so they decided to come back and uh, in order to know who was this great Lord. And then the comparison, remember, so much richer than, yes? With curses, which means gestures of, of affection, they again sought to worm, worm, worm. So these are, remember in, in, the, in English, these R's are usually not pronounced. I know that for Spanish speakers, this is very tough, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to try to do it in my best pronunciation. So with curses, they again sought to worm, worm, okay? And literally, is from is coming from seek, which is buscar, right? So sought is the past of seek to worm, worm. As when you say word, is the same a sound, worm with the r not rolled. Okay, so sought to worm the secret out of her. You see, so they seek to enter there and find the secret out of her and to bring it, bring it out. And this time, forgetting what she had said of him before, she gave out her husband as a great, and, and look at this word, bearded, bearded, gray bearded merchant. And merchant, merchant, remember us again is that R in, in, in equally in bearded, bearded, the R is not pronounced, and merchant, merchant, also is not really, the R doesn't really sound in the phonetics. Remember, gave out is a phrasal verb and means she uh, kind of painted, she um, illustrated, or she um, described, we could say, her husband as a gray bearded merchant, merchant, whose affairs call him often, often, sorry, often away from home. Nor did the sisters fail to note how she contradicted herself, so letting them understand she had nothing to hide. And this is again, nor did the sisters fail to note how she contradicted herself, so letting them understand she had nothing to hide. And again, this is an inversion, nor did the sisters fail 
just I want you to get in, in, to get this structure because I, I'd like that you use them also or use it in your own writings and and if you can identify these inversions that would be fantastic. Again dismissed with which presence the jealous elder were harder than ever to know the secret of Sika's marriage and harder than ever this is also an expression saying full of um, ardientes. I always use this word because I think it's a very ardientes de saber, no? Deseosas de saber, you could say. They guess that this husband of hers must be no mere man and enviously wailed at her for making a mystery of his real name. So remember in this case, enviously railed at her means with full of envious of envy, you could say full of envy or enviously, um, which is um, an adverb. Rail at her is like gave out or um, yes, kind of um, um, they give, gave out at her and they asked her why she was, you know, lying, why she was doing that for making a mystery of his real name. So she will, they show their ang anger, we could say. So they hatched a plot and they hatch a plot is like literally means they build like, like a trickery, we could say. They build a plot, they, they, they made like a, um, they created a plan. They hatched, hatched a plot of which he was well aware he, Cupid, was well, well aware as a good god, you know, he's a god, and he was aware of this plot, plot. For that night, he murmured in her ear, and that's what he said to Sike, Cupid's words in direct speech. Dearest one, beware of these sisters. They, remember, is your sisters. Tomorrow, they will tempt thee to look on me, and this thee is you. Tomorrow they will tempt thee to look on me, but that would be the end of our happiness. That would be the end of our happiness. So that, you know, Cupid was saying, careful, with tears and kisses, Sike said she would rather die a hundred times than disobey his least wish. And see, this expression is she would rather die. Ella preferiría antes morir. She would rather die. This is a conditional, would rather die a hundred times, you know, it's in a very um, emphatic way, than comparison, than disobey his least wish. His least wish is the smallest wish, okay? Though determined to keep her secret, Psyche admits to her sisters that she has never seen her husband and does not know his name. Jealous, they put it into her mind that he is a monster who, for all his fair words, will soon devour her. They were ate it, eat her or destroy her. She must kill him while he sleeps. That's what they say that she has to do. And remember the modal here, she must kill him while, mientras, he sleeps. Though turned between love and dread, though, aunque, no? Though this linker, turn between, partida, no? Dividida, turn between love and dread. Dread is como terror. Sique makes ready a lamp, a lamp, a knife as night draws near. As always, her husband came home with the darkness and after embracing Sique, lay down in bed. Curiosity now aiding dread, she made up her mind at least to see what shape he bore. 
And here, remember, at least is not at last, it's at least to see, al menos para, no? To see what shape he bore, in qué forma tenía, no? She just wanted to use, you know, curiosity, her curiosity was, and with these ideas that the sisters um, um, told her, she is saying, okay, I'm going to see at, at least how he looks like. When his breathing told that he was asleep, she rose to light the lamp, then holding it, remember this lamp is, it with, is with oil, so this is what this is important for the story. If you can visualize the scene, she rose to light to light the lamp, then holding it up in one hand, and the sharp knife in the other. And sharp knife, remember, the R doesn't need to be raw if it's UK accent. So sharp knife in the other in the other in the other hand. She's told softly to his side and this means she was aside in this moment like in, in without being seen right and quietly we could say and secretly softly to his side a cry had almost burst from her lips as lamp gleam showed as lamp gleam is the not the light that is produced by this this lamp showed, mostró, the sweetest and loveliest, aquí son superlativos de superioridad, the sweetest and loveliest of the monsters. Cupid himself in the bloom of youthful beauty, with ambrosial locks curling about his rosy cheeks and snow white shoulders on which his wings were softly folded like flowers, like flowers, sorry. At such a sight, that in tal vista, a tal vista, no? On tal vista, at such a sight, the knife dropped from Sique's trembling hand. Beside him lay his bow, bow, remember? Al arco. And quiver, the case where you put inside the, the, the arrows. When she drew out, y desde ahí, when she, when, es desde ahí, no? When she drew out one of the golden tipped arrows, took one of them, and in examining, it pricked her finger, instantly inflaming her blood with new love for a husband no longer unseen. So if she, if she was in love before, now it's doubled because she has pricked her finger with these arrows, but that's what they, they do to, if, if you pricked your finger with those arrows, the first thing you see, you feel absolutely in love. Bending over this sleeping form, she would have hastily stopped to kiss him, stooped, sorry, stooped, um, hastily stooped, stoop, to kiss him. Yes, so see, she was almost going to kiss him him and she would have hastily stooped to kiss him when in her agitation she let a drop of hot oil fall from the lamp upon his shoulders okay so remember this is a moment that has been um that i have showed you in at the beginning um so this is the moment when she discovered who is she, who is he, and um, full of love, in flame of this love, she wants to kiss him. So she is approaching him. When in her agitation, she let a drop of hot oil fall from the lamp upon his shoulder. So you can imagine what is going to happen. Roused by the smarts, Cupid sprang up, sprang up, and at a glance understood all. Cupid's words in direct speech. Ah, sí que, he explained. And in here it's interesting that you know how to say this one. Dao, dao, 
Tao is like saying, you, Tao, has reigned our love. Why listen to the, fijaros esta palabra, treacherous, treacherous sisters, rather than to my warning. Again, warning. Now we must part forever. That's what he said. In tearful entreaties, she sank before him and sought to clasp. ¿Veis cómo se repite mucho esto? El sought to, sought to, es buscó él, sought to clasp, agarrarse, clasp his knees. But he spread his wings and, and, and remember this, and flew into the air, and flew into the air without a look of forgiveness. At the same at the same moment, the enchanted palace vanished about her like a dream. Then Sique stood alone in the cold darkness, calling vainly for the love she had lost, with his last words ringing in her ears. Till here, well done. Remember, this is the second part. Now read it on your own and send me your audio by email to analanguagecoach at gmail.com. If you are my coachy, if not, you can write me and ask me for these lessons. Subscribe and leave a comment below. Thank you, I really appreciate that. And next part will be done soon. Uh, the third part is penance and pardon. And that's it. Thank you for being here and talk to you soon. Bye.